Hey professionals, Orson here. Today we're diving into a hot topic, Adobe Premiere users switching to DaVinci Resolve. And all I can say is, welcome, we've got jackets and we've been waiting for you. The reason why I'm doing this is I run a six figure video production agency and if I was still using Premiere, I would not be at this financial stage. When I switched to DaVinci Resolve, my editing speed improved by two and a half times. Can you imagine editing two and a half times faster and what that would do for your profitability? And look, I get it. The leap from Premiere to Resolve can seem like a huge step, and it is. And that's exactly why in this video, I'm gonna break down some of the most common mistakes Premiere users make when switching to DaVinci Resolve. So without further ado, let's debunk some misconceptions, alleviate those fears, and make sure you're ready to tackle Resolve with confidence. And so the first mistake that's gonna come up is not using the project manager system. With Premiere, you're used to that Premiere project file. In fact, you usually just save that in your Finder or Explorer. So if I click over here and go in here, usually we'd have a new folder in here and we'd call that Premiere and that's where we'd save all our Premiere Pro project files. We're not doing that anymore. So in fact, what we're doing is when you open up DaVinci Resolve, you get this window here. So this is your local database and it's a singular one. Now, at first this feels really annoying because it immediately takes away this feeling of being able to just send people project files, but that already is a massive time wasting feature. Why should we be sending each other project files? Here's version one, version two comes back, send it across, forgot to call it version three. Now he's not sure which one to work on. Now we start working on older project files and boom, we've wasted time. And look, I hated the way Resolve fixed this issue for the first year, but honestly, I can't live without it now. So the way these databases work is that they all get stored here and that's stored on a single point on your machine. You can export a project file like you would with Premiere Pro, but the collaborative cloud feature means that I'm never sending a project file across. I can just invite people in with an email and we just work on that same project file. No version numbers, we never get lost and DaVinci Resolve can save backups. So if someone screws something up, it's all backed up and saved. And if you really need to, you can export a DaVinci Resolve project file like Premiere and put it into a folder when you need to archive everything together. There is a solution for everyone. And it is gonna be a pain not having those Premiere Pro project files or DaVinci Resolve project files, but trust me, you're gonna hate having to use them again. So let's move on to the next point, which is not adapting to the DaVinci Resolve workflow. So when you open up Premiere Pro, you can pretty much customize that layout however you want. You can put everything on a single window and that's pretty cool, but it can also look pretty messy. So when we click into a project, the first thing you're gonna notice is nothing looks the same. That's pretty obvious. But now navigating this is completely different. See, you can't go up to your workspace and just drag different windows around like you can in Premiere. So this is your effects. Usually in Premiere, you could like grab this, drag it, put it on the right if that's where you prefer your effects to be. Resolve doesn't let you do this. And as annoying as it may feel at first, I'm just gonna be honest, Resolve's done a really good job at organizing these workflows. And by keeping them locked in, it allows for easier collaboration either hiring assistant editors, being an assistant for someone prolific, or just working with other people. It's just a lot easier when everyone's got the same workspace. The big thing to note though, is that there are different workspaces and different workflows. So a lot like your traditional Hollywood editing or commercial editing, there are these workspaces. So usually in the old school days, you'd have a big building, there'd be a computer over there just for uploading and ingesting media. Then there'd be a computer over here, for your rough cuts and then there'll be a guy over here doing your sound effects and a guy over there doing your color grading. Now, Resolve has all those little stations put up here. So you've got your ingesting media, your rough cut, fine cut, followed by your effects, followed by your color grade, sound effects, and then finally export and delivery. All of these windows are designed for a specific tab. When you're first starting out, the most similar tab would be this editing tab followed by delivery tab. Those are the two things everyone starts out with. And in saying that, you can do about 95, 90% of everything just in this edit tab alone, which is pretty cool. So these other ones here are when you start getting into more advanced and time-saving features, which is important. So the main thing that's gonna come up for Premiere users is they're gonna be thinking about this non-customizable layout and how annoying it's gonna get. Trust me, for most kinds of projects, this is a much more time efficient way of doing things. And I'm talking about YouTube videos, commercials, Hollywood style videos. All those projects do work very well in this Resolve workflow. The one place I would say that it doesn't work well and is actually much better in the Adobe suite 
would be your animated explainer videos or anything with those heavy animations and motion graphics. Just the ability to go between different graphic design suites, After Effects and Premiere Pro, it is pretty much the better space to go. I can say that from experience, but the other places I mentioned, this is a faster and more profitable way to go, which will give you more money in your pocket at the end of the day. Talking about these workstations, one of the things I'll mention with Adobe is that you'd have your Premiere and your After Effects and your Audition. Well, what was really annoying for me was switching between those programs. What if it could all just be in the one program? Well, that's what Resolve does. If you want to do any sort of After Effects, you can do them in here in your Fusion. Now, the mistake that comes up is that people get scared because it's a node based system. It's not a intuitive way of doing things compared to layers. Layers is very easy to imagine, nodes is not. But once you start getting the rhythm of them, my God, do you work faster. So be mindful of that if you want to do After Effects and you want to create your own custom motion graphics and stuff for clients or even YouTube videos, you will be needing to learn the node system and people get scared thinking it's not worth their time, but trust me, that's where some of the big bank really is. And that's pretty much the after effects in DaVinci Resolve. And then there's also pretty much a audition in DaVinci Resolve called Fairlight, which is the audio workspace tab, which is this one here. This is really just as capable as an audition, maybe even better. And it's just nice not having to jump back and forth between programs to get things to work. And sound design really has been a bit of a letdown in our industry, if I'm being honest, compared to what's really capable and out there. So if you want to stand out from the crowd and be someone better, really mastering the Fairlight tools in DaVinci Resolve is a great way to go. Moving on to the next one. Now, this one's gonna make a lot of you go, you know what, Resolve's not for me. And I really implore you to please have some patience with DaVinci Resolve, which is I'm talking about the manual. In the Adobe Suite, we're really used to having this massive YouTube community with all the video tutorials you could imagine. And I would love to have that in Resolve as well, but being a roughly, honestly, we've only adopted it in the YouTube culture in the last year and a half. It's still got a long way to grow in terms of video. So you do rely on this manual. What I can say is that this is the best manual I have ever seen, period. And it is reading and reading does suck, but it's honestly really clear and articulate. Don't think of this manual like anything Adobe's given. This is actually quite an easy to follow cookbook, if you were to say. This all sounds like complicated alien language right now. As you start working into it, you'll learn what you need to as you go along. It's pretty easy to select like, hey, I need to learn something about editing effects and transitions. Let's say I need to learn about transitions. You click here, it takes you to this page and then you can click here. And look, yes, this is just to be clear, like a 4,000 page manual it's quick and easy to navigate. I've used it probably a handful of times, say about 15 times in the last couple of years, I'd say. And it's honestly been really effective and everything they state in there is clear and true. It's really just troubleshooted problems I couldn't find online. And more and more, I keep using it over checking online forums first these days. Now, moving on to another mistake. And now this one's actually gonna get you excited. You do not need a powerhouse PC to edit videos. So let's be clear, I run a six figure video production agency. I'm doing effects, 2D compositions, a couple 3D effects, all sorts of things on a MacBook Air M1. It's incredible how this $1,000 laptop can just pretty much run what a $6,000 PC couldn't in the Adobe suite. And I'm going to make a little point here. This is specific to Apple's silicon hardware and specifically those M chips, the M1s, the M2s. If you can find an M1 for second hand for cheap, honestly, it handles everything. When you switch to PC, I will just warn you that you are reliant on the GPU memory handling of the effects. So as you get deeper into effects, you'll know that more effects requires more GPU memory. And if there just isn't enough GPU memory, it's not like it can just bank the effect and keep rendering on. It will just crash and you can't render it. If you are doing anything that's a bit more visually intense and post-production wise, just be careful that you get a graphic card that can handle everything. But if you're doing, look again, YouTube editing, commercial editing, honestly, just a MacBook Air M1 handling everything is ridiculous. And the reason this is the case is because DaVinci Resolve is an updated and newish kind of software. So if you look at the Adobe Premiere Pro, this is a bit unfortunate to say, and it's a bit sad, but it's like a 14, 15 year old software with a fresh coat of paint. If you peel away that paint, it's cracking and not very usable at all. And so if you have a look at this and you hit render on your media encoders and your premieres, 
it's only ever using one CPU or a couple and it's never really that efficient. So you can buy all this extra hardware and it doesn't really relate to a faster or more effective workflow. Versus Resolve, you hit render, you just see everything in your computer, everything just starts rendering and running. So it's really an incredible tool how that works. Another thing to quickly mention that if you are going to be doing a lot of stuff that requires your GPU, you do need the paid version of Resolve. In saying that, especially for beginners, I'd say all beginners wouldn't need the paid version of Resolve. And if, as you become a faster editor, it really becomes like a no brainer cost considering that it's $400 and you get a lifetime license. I bought mine, I bought my license about six years ago and yeah, I've never had to pay for another license since it's been great. I'm going to talk about another mistake and now this one's actually going to be against the Resolve community. Looking into the Resolve community, especially on Facebook pages and forums, we're a bit of a, we're a bunch of pretentious and you know, people can ask basic and beginner questions and everyone just goes, have you read the manual? And look, the manual's great, but sometimes we just need a helping hand from someone. So the biggest mistake I'm going to say is that you haven't joined my Discord. There are specific Discord groups that are beginner friendly. Now I'm specifically creating a DaVinci Resolve Discord for YouTube editors. So we're going to be talking about the specific YouTube motion graphics, trends, what tools you need to learn, different functionalities, because honestly, you could spend 10,000 hours on DaVinci Resolve and still not master it. So it's important to join the communities that have the relevant support you're looking for. So just keep that one in mind. And look, if you do come across one of those groups, just remember, none of us are perfect, but there is a place for you. And then going on to the final one, I wanna just talk about the collaboration tools. It's not so much a mistake as that Premiere users easily overlook it. So if you've been in the Adobe suite and I look, I haven't been using Adobe much for the last five years, there was the Adobe cloud collaboration tools. And as far as I remember, and from what I can see on Reddit forums, it just absolutely sucks dog shit. But I can tell you right now using Blackmagic DaVinci Resolve's cloud collaboration features, it's just the most beautiful godsend thing to happen. Project files easily sync between each other. Everyone's computer remembers where they store their files differently. So you can have different storage solutions and different folders and you can still store everything perfectly fine. I don't believe you can do that in Adobe. And so, well, that's probably been one of the biggest things that's helped me become such a profitable editor. And a lot of that comes to the fact that you have these locked in workstations and that single project file storage location is as much as it feels like it's a hindrance to not, not have these bits customizable by keeping them solidified in one place, it allows Resolve to create the perfect collaboration tool. And honestly, it's teamwork makes the dream work. Look, you can become good at many things, but you can only become the best at few. And that even goes into specific processes and workflows in the video editing collaboration space. And DaVinci Resolve really understands this and they really understand what it takes to enable creative freedom and profitability. And that's why I really recommend that if you're going to be a creative professional in the coming future, it's not a tool you should think about learning, it's a tool you need to learn. The adoption rate's been pretty massive and I don't think it's gonna slow down. Unless Adobe's got something in the works happening where they're going to be creating their own updated studio version of Premiere, Resolve may take this one out of the ballpark. So thank you so much for listening to me rant and ramble about DaVinci Resolve. I really enjoy making these. I hope you enjoyed watching them. And until next time, I will catch you around.